Uh, okay, so I'm going to tell you about async function and how we are going to use async function in our observable. So I'm going to import observable from RxJS Rx. So I will call my observable. So first of all, I will make a variable. I'll observe data which is a string let's suppose and observable call which is our object observable I will say that store a stand of call okay and uh, <coughs> let's make a method get observable Then I will make uh, other variable right here in return. Return of the variable dot uh, interval. Let's suppose I want to emit every value for after one second. Dot. Take so take. I want to pass the value that's suppose 10. Then I will apply a map function and I will say that for every value I will say that v plus 10. Now I think it's a variable written. So I will make another function to call this. So I will just call observe. Which is another method I'm going to call. So I'm going to store this observable in a variable. So I will say observable store. This is our object. So this dot get observable. So we need to subscribe observable as you know. If you study what is observable, subscribe and it's going to take a parameter. Let's suppose a value. And value stands to this dot observe real data tends to be okay. It's giving error. Why? Uh, yeah, it's a string, so I need to convert into number. Now it's correct. So let's render this uh, observable data in our HTML. So observable data. Observable data, okay. And save it. Now you can see so component here. Okay. Uh, I think it is not reflected. Okay, home component observable data. Okay, I haven't created a constructor, so I will make the constructor uh, constructor. And in our constructor, I will call my method. So this dot call observable. Okay, so in constructors in JavaScript function, it is going to call whenever the instance of our component is going to create. And although we can apply lifecycle hook like ng or in it, so let's load. Yeah, as you can see, it's incrementing. So it, it will increment up to till 19, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we are listening observable and uh, subscribing it. So I'm going to now use async function. How async function can reduce our code and in that you can see that uh, we are going to store our observable in, a, in that. Yeah, although we need to use ng on destroy, ng on destroy. So in this lifecycle hook. Uh, I will unsubscribe my observable so this dot observable store unsubscribe so this thing also done uh, when we are going to get observable so as you can see that uh, the power of async function and uh, so let's run it so I don't need a, you can say a variable and I don't need to subscribe it so async function is going to take care of it so I'm just removing this code okay and I don't need this thing also 
uh, I need a function to call this observable. So, okay. Uh, let's try the code. I don't need this also. Okay, so write the code. I will say that observable data is our observer uh, which is having number as an input. Okay, and observable, observable, this dot call observable. I will make number. Uh, sorry for the <coughs> pausing. So, I don't need this call observable, I don't have such kind of method. As you see that I just removed that. So get observable I have a method and uh, I need to store that. So I will say this dot observable data is equal to this one. And I don't think so I need this. Okay, so now you can see that I remove pretty much of amount of code and number of lines as you can and I need a async function to call my observable automatically then I will say async and this is going to call my observable and uh, and you can say is when the component is destroyed so it will automatically unsubscribe it so let's save it and see whether it is working or not 10 9 as you can say see that it is working correctly so this is the power of async function which is going to take care of you can say calling and unsubscribing observable so thank you guys thanks for watching